you can actually catch the ball. Every morning at 5.30, Stuart Brown arrives at his job at Washington Ear to get materials ready for the volunteers who arrive at 6 a.m. The most important part of that is probably getting the coffee maker on. Brown runs the dial-in service for Washington Ear, a nonprofit organization based in Silver Spring. California is simply the harbinger of changes, in this case demographic. For the last 40 years, the Ear has provided the visually and physically impaired with audio access to dozens of newspapers, magazines, and live performances. It's Brown's job to make sure the more than 5,000 subscribers to this free service can get their news first thing in the morning. So this is why it's called the dial-in service. You have reached the Metropolitan Washington Air dial-in newspaper and magazine service. Please enter your ID number. So everybody who uses the service has an ID number and a security number. Washington Ear was founded by the late Margaret Fansteel, who was blind and a huge advocate for the visually impaired. She was known for her tenacity in raising funds for the organization. The Ear was one of the first radio reading services of its kind in the country. They need two things. They need to know what's going on in the world and locally, and we give them that for sure. And if it's an election time, they want to read every article. They want to know, I mean, not just the voter's guide, but all the general articles about who said what where and they need um, grocery ads. Tasty choice shrimp meal kit frozen 24 ounce package for 99 each. They need their TV um, listings. That list right there is my TV guide reader list so I know who's reading what TV uh, schedules for what day right through until July at the moment. All of these local things that you and I take for granted they need the schedules of the movies, and we describe live theater, and so we publish or uh, we um, read the schedules of those theaters and on what date we will be describing a performance, and that's free to our um, anyone who attends who's visually impaired. But getting a stint as a reader for the Washington yeah. Ear isn't easy. Folks interested in volunteering go through an audition process just like the pros. He has enjoyed some real successes at the local and county levels. We'll have them read an article and then when they come out of the studio having done that they come and see me and we do the scheduling, we go over a lot of stuff in detail especially with our introductions. I mean there's a formula for all this um, and they're with me for about an hour and then I have them listen to what they've just read and then we critique it and um, so that they get an idea uh, of um, you know how they're sounding. It's important to be able to read them to make a good presentation and so everybody doesn't pass the audition. Um, there are a hundred vocabulary words. There are more than 300 people who volunteer for Washington Ear. The organization provides radios pre-tuned to its station that broadcast 24 hours a day. Pre-recorded readings of the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and the Washington Post are on the schedule each and every day. How an Atlanta judge described the massive cheating scandal that embroiled the city's public school system. Joe Schechter and Glenn Harris are regular team readers of the Washington Post. My late mother had a, a low vision issue while she was alive, but she lived down in Richmond, so it wasn't possible or practical to uh, read for the equivalent or the sister organization down in Richmond. So I started volunteering here in 2008. And they haven't fired me yet, so I keep coming back. Usually read maybe about uh, five minutes worth of, of each article before we move on and pass it along to the next person. That's so that we can also get through the whole paper so people get an idea of what's going on. At the editorials, we read op-ed op pieces so that people get an idea of what is going on and big issues in the world. So a lot of it's international, too. So we, they read a whole bunch of different things. Mary Knopke comes in each Monday for her two-hour shift at the ear, and following close behind, her poodle Daisy, who listens intently as she reads the Wall Street Journal in one of the many recording booths there. 
The Italians sent a Portuguese mercantile vessel to help the boat near the Libyan coast. I, well, I, I wouldn't normally read the Wall Street Journal, so this is good for me. So I read about business news that I wouldn't usually. And, um, and I like it. I like the people. It's a really nice group of people. Um, and I think I'm sort of helping a little bit. Greek pasta salad made in store. Washington Ear is funded by the jurisdictions it serves in Maryland, Virginia, and the District of Columbia. The group also receives private donations. Montgomery County is a supporter of this nonprofit. Each year, grant money is set aside in the budget for their work in the community. Councilmember Nancy Florine has been a guest reader for Washington Ear. Such a, uh, a great experience to um, uh, just re read the Washington Post or any kind of kind of material and, and make it alive. Mm -hmm. It's really uh, a great uh, opportunity to make a difference and I, I do encourage people to uh, to go over there and give them, a, give them a hand. You're super organized. I'm looking at all this back here. <laughs> Attention to detail is crucial. Yeah. Both Brown and Opplinger say knowing the service they are providing to thousands of people is invaluable, makes their work that much more rewarding. I look forward to coming in here because I know I'm helping a bunch of people. But when the migrants, mostly sub-Saharan Africans, saw it approach, they rushed to one side. Thousands of people. The unusually harsh prison sentences meted out last week. A lot of satisfaction out of it, job satisfaction. I always feel at the end of each day, I always have that sense of accomplishment. It would have given him an electoral college landslide. It's a lifeline. This is the word that people use when they uh, send comments to us about the service. It's a lifeline. Freshly fried chicken tenders, six forty-nine a pound. And Dr. Fansteel herself was blind, and she wanted people to be uh, informed about what was going on in their world. His Republican state chairman has sobering but useful words. And if they couldn't pick up the paper, how were they going to do that? For more information about Washington Ear, you can visit their website at washear.org.